Gene expression is an inherently uh, probabilistic process. Uh, my lab has been very much interested in this for the last 10 years, and uh, we've been studying this initially in bacteria, uh, and what we, sh we observed is that bacteria are extremely variable in gene expression from, from, from cell to cell, and it's not because the cells have different genetics or different environments, it's just an inherently stochastic gene expression process that drives this variability. And we, we, we think that this is important for the population to survive in fluctuating environments. Most recently, we're really interested in how these fluctuations are important for controlling variability during development uh, of an organism. In this case, this is very different than, than the microbial systems because when you form a tissue, you don't want individual cells to randomly make decisions because the tissue has to be a coherent uh, collection of cells. So uh, what we're really interested in is tr trying to figure out what are the control mechanisms that underlie the stochastic fluctuations. How do you keep these fluctuations low so that the tissue and the cells during development make the right decisions? We study development in C. elegans. An important aspect of this, uh, of this model system is that development is very constant, which means that when you compare a lot of different animals, uh, that you will see that uh, development is always taking place in exactly the same manner, indicating that fluctuations in gene expression are very well controlled in this organism. One of the processes that we study in detail is the migration of a neuroblast, which is called the Q-cell, which always migrates to, a, uh, to exactly the same position during larval development. And one of the questions that we wanted to address is how this process is so well controlled. Q-cell migration can be subdivided into two distinct phases. An initial wind-independent uh, phase of migration, uh, which is terminated by Q-neuroblast division, and a subsequent uh, wind-dependent phase of Q-daughter cell migration. Canonical wind signaling is activated during this initial phase uh, of migration and this is necessary for proper migration of Q-daughter cells later on. Classic genetic studies have identified multiple conserved wind pathway components that result in activation of canonical wind signaling in Q-neuroblasts. These include TCF, um, beta-catenin and multiple uh, frizzles. Canonical wind signaling activation in um, Q neuroblasts ultimately results in expression of the Hux gene MAP5, which is both necessary and sufficient for posterior migration of Q daughter cells. To understand how wind signaling controls gene expression during QL neuroblast migration, we first quantify the expression levels of various wind signaling components. Using a recently developed assay, the single molecule RNA fish, we were able to precisely quantify the number of mRNA molecules in the Q neuroblast in the intact C. elegans tissue. Using this approach, we found that the level of the wing target gene MAP5 is dynamically upregulated over the course of QR migration. We noticed that the final levels of MAP5 falls consistently at around 50 to 60 transcripts per cell. In other words, the variability across cells of the same stage is quite low. The C. elegans genome encodes four frizzled uh, orthologs. Two of those have been implicated in the control of Q cell uh, migration, and these are MIC1 and LIN17. So previous studies have shown that loss of MIC1 or LIN17 results in Q-cell migration defects with varying penetrance. Interestingly, when we examined the level of MAP5 expression in these mutants, we found an increase in cell-to-cell -cell variability compared to the wild type. In particular, this increased variability was able to help us predict the penetrance of the migratory defect exhibited by the QL daughter cells. For correct posterior migration to happen, a threshold of about 25 MAP5 transcripts appears to be necessary in the QL neuroblast. This is because within a given genotype, the fraction of animals that express less than this amount matched closely with the percentage of individuals displaying the mutant phenotype. These observations indicate that increasing gene expression variability could have a phenotypic impact on development. We also examined expression of frizzles during initial migration and found that their expression is dynamic. MIC1 expression is initially high, but over the course of initial migration its expression drops and is therefore inversely correlated with expression of MAP5. On the other hand, LIN17 expression is initially low, but over the course of initial migration its expression increases and is therefore positively correlated with MAP5. We also examined uh, expression of these frizzles upon wind uh, loss of function, so loss of function of uh, EGL20, and found that this, these expression dynamics are completely lost. 
And these results suggest that, that both positive and negative feedback loops occur within this uh, C. elegans wind. By making use of very single and compound mutants, we next examine these feedback interactions in a more detailed and systematic manner. Applying a network inference algorithm to the average gene expression profiles, we estimated the interaction strengths among our genes of interest. The inferred network topology revealed a map of dependent positive feedback on 17 and a map of independent negative feedback on mic one In addition, MAP5 is also found to negatively regulate its own expression, as well as that of another frisome receptor model. Using the inferred network, we then constructed a stochastic model of the wing signaling pathway. The power of this approach is that we can use this computational model to both analytically and numerically predict the variability in MAP5 expression. We found that a combination of strong positive feedback and strong negative feedback resulted in low expression variability without compromising the average expression level. Furthermore, despite being constructed from average expression profiles, our model could correctly predict the observed gene expression variability in a variety of wing pathway mutants. By combining mutant analysis with, with very precise in vivo expression analysis, we found that there is important feedback regulation in the wind pathway, which ensures that target gene expression is very well regulated. Given the conservation of the wind pathway, we expect that such uh, feedback regulation is also important in mammalian wind signaling. So in, in summary, we're very excited about this project because, because I think it's one of the, the first examples where we can study a single cell moving in an in vivo environment in, in a whole organism and follow the fluctuations in gene expression uh, in a single cell. And, and uh, not only that, I think we also understand how these fluctuations are controlled in the wild type animal and how these fluctuations go crazy and, and get amplified in a mutant animal. And uh, it's very exciting and we hope that this work will inspire uh, much more re research in this direction.